Okay, um, I'm Michael Franken from the International Erosion Control Association and we're at our a field day site at Redlands um, up in uh, Brisbane at the moment. The purpose of the day is to uh, give participants a whole bunch of practical demonstrations of various erosion and sediment control products in the field. So this is our control site. Um, so completely bare soil. As you can see, we're running water over it, not massive velocities, um, but it's still actively eroding. Now it's actually quite a stable soil. And so what we're finding is the loose material from the top, I think it's probably been raked smooth previously in a preparation to put a control measure on it. All the loose soil's coming off, the sort of clay material under, underneath staying there, but you can see it's actually high, highly turbid. So this was one of the original turf uh, plots. Um, this site was a, a turf research facility in, it, um, in its original guise. And when we actually run the water over the top of this, what we find is that it takes a long time for, to get any reasonable runoff. Um, because the, uh, the turf encourages infiltration into the soil. So the old rule of thumb is basically for every 10% uh, increase in soil surface cover, you get 10 mil infiltration of your, of your water going into the soil. So with a nice 100% soil surface cover like this, getting quite a lot of water actually runs off. So if we compare this site to say the bare site, we had runoff in a matter of seconds at the bare site at the other end, we put a full IBC, a thousand litres of water down this thing and we didn't get any runoff at the end. Um, so okay, on this plot what we've got is a, a sediment fence installation. Again we've deliberately set two of these up um, to, to illustrate how um, it's, they're often poorly installed on construction sites. A critical aspect of a sediment fenced installation is, is the material has to be trenched into the ground so that water cannot get under the sediment fence. Any sediment control structure has to pond water to work. If it's not ponding water, it's not, um, not slowing flow and not allowing gravity, gravity to settle the sediment out. So in this particular situation here, the water's just flowing under, underneath it. And that's something we commonly find when we're auditing construction sites, is that people just haven't, the contractors haven't taken the time to install the product correctly. The next sediment fence down below us is what we call a maintenance free sediment fence, because it's again not trapping any sediment. So like I said, we've got to be able to pond water. And so if we're not ponding water, we're not trapping sediment. And so you can see with this one here below us, it's uh, just a very small panel, water flows in, turns around, goes around the side of it. In fact, if anything, it's concentrating flow and increasing the erosion um, potential and eroding the soil there where it concentrates. So what we've got here is the correct installation of a sediment fence. Now normally we wouldn't put it in a concentrated flow situation like this. Sediment fence is not designed for drains and channels, it really isn't. It's a sheet flow, uh, a sheet, sheet flow best management practice. So with this correct installation you can see it's nicely trenched into the ground. The posts are on the downstream side, they've got good spacing so that they're supporting the fence and it's actually ponding water. All right, so what we've got in this particular plot are some examples of uh, velocity control structures. So um, with erosion control, we can either cover the soil surface, you know, it's 70 to 100% soil surface cover and protect the soil from raindrop splash erosion or the shear stresses of flow, or we can put temporary check structures to basically slow the flow velocity. So the theory being the water flows just before it gets to the maximum permissible velocity the soil will handle, you put a check structure in there, slow the water down, it then bypasses that structure, speeds up again, and then we slow it down again and continue down the slope. We've put some deliberate mistakes in this one as well. The middle one, we haven't joined it correctly, you'll see that it's concentrating flow there as well. These type of techniques aren't suitable for dispersive soils. Any product that ponds water or a technique that ponds water on a dispersive soil generally isn't, uh, isn't appropriate and you'll end up, end, up, end up getting a tunnel underneath it. So another, uh, another way we can uh, protect the soil from erosion or temporary erosion control on construction or building sites is to put a geofabric on the ground. So the theory is that the geofabric actually protects the soil either from the raindrop splash erosion falling out of the sky or just um, flows that actually come over as overland flow. We've actually done a few deliberate mistakes on this, um, on this particular example. Normally you would, uh, you would overlap the geofabric in the opposite direction so that when the water runs down it, and you'll see it as it comes down, you want, the, you want it overlapped so the water actually goes over the top of it. In this particular so situation it hasn't been overlapped, hasn't been trenched in the ground, and so the water can actually flow under the geofabric and erode the soil underneath. 
With any of these rolled erosion control products, installation and, and soil preparation is the key. And so you actually, you need to have intimate soil contact so you've got to rake it smooth. Um, you've got to trench it in at the top, trench it into the bottom, um, cut off trenches as you go down and then peg these products in at about 300 millimetre cent centres. So what we have here is a, um, a spray on erosion control solution. It's a soil polymer. Um, this particular product is vital, vital bond mat stone wall. The idea is that it provides a, you spray it on the soil surface, provides a protective layer, um, stop the soil from erosion or from eroding. So you see we're just running some water down over the product um, at the moment. But you can see the water's running down over the polymer quite nicely. You know, there's virtually no turbidity, um, no evidence of soil erosion. And products like these you'll get about, uh, you can get up to about three months life out of it. Now one of the things we did when we, we ran the water over the plots was actually to me measure the uh, turbidity and total suspended solids coming off from the various treatments, um, just using handheld meters. And so the, uh, the water we'd used had a, had a turbidity ranging from 50 to 65 NTUs as a background level. So if we look at the, uh, the first one, that's our control site. So with absolutely no um, erosion protection or sediment controls whatsoever. So we got 5,370 um, uh, NTUs of turbidity and equivalent to about 7,090 um, total suspended solids a milligrams per litre. So if we looked at our first treatment, which was just sediment fence alone. Now normally we don't use sediment fences in erosion control. Um, we did deliberately set some of it up to fail. Even with the sediment fence in place, um, because of the soil type that's here, we managed to get a turbidity reduction from down from nearly 5,500 down to 684 or 237 milligrams per litre TSS. So that's a reasonable reduction. Still not compliant with uh, most of the water quality guidelines, but has given us a reasonable reduction. The next treatment was the velocity control structures, the simple little geotube or geobag type structures, um, things like uh, compost filled tubes, uh, coconut logs, that sort of thing. We've got a reduction from 5,370 down to 458 NTUs, um, interesting 640 um, TSS. Our next treatment was the geofabric. And so we've got two readings for the geofabric. So we've got where it was installed incorrectly and where it was installed correctly. So where it was installed incorrectly, um, we had a turbidity reduction from 500, 5,300 down to about 840. I actually would have expected a little bit better than that, even though the water did get under it, or 243 milligrams per litre TSSS. Where we installed it correctly, um, we got a reduction down to 650 NTUs, or 460 milligrams per litre. Again, I'm a little surprised, I guess it just demonstrates either it was contaminated slightly from the, the uncontrolled area or the poorly installed area, or there was that much water getting under the geofab that it actively eroded the soil underneath. The last of the measurements we took was on the vital bond that stone wall. Uh, compared to the control, which was 5,300, we get down to 95 NTUs or 24 milligrams per litre TSSS. Okay, so what we've shown today is a series of erosion and sediment controls that are applicable both in a, in a smaller construction situation, so as a building house site, or um, the larger construction site, such as a large road project or subdivision or something like that. So we've clearly demonstrated that exposed bare soil erodes readily, generates high levels of turbidity. We've demonstrated that there are a whole bunch of different techniques, but if you don't install them correctly, then often they'll actually increase the erosion potential or increase the potential for sediment runoff. So, so installation is, is ab absolutely critical and um, when, you, when installing products you actually need to understand their purpose, how they function, what they're trying to protect, so is it concentrated flow, is it sheet flow, is it raindrop splash coming out of the sky, pick the right product for, for the circumstance that you're trying to protect, understand your soil type and install your, your, um, your products properly on the ground.